Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Gam Ganapati Namaha. Om Gam Ganapati Namaha. Om Gam Ganapati Namaha. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Brahma Mira Striparan Takare. Banu Shashi Bamisito. Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra. Shani Rahu Keteva. Sarve Graha Shanti Kara Bhavantu Om Om Hrim Burayanama Om Hrim Shukrayanama Well, greetings and welcome to another episode of Cosmic Kev 100, your weekly astro video zine where I bring you the 12 signs of the zodiac and the tradition of tropical astrology, also with mentions of Jyotish Vedic astrology and what's going on in the skies and what the implications are and how that might be affecting our lives this week. And so thanks for being here. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Share with a friend, get the bell notification to ring, and thank you for your comments. Keep them coming, friends. Um, I don't always get to them right away, but you all know who you are. And, I mean, some of you have funny YouTube names, and it's harder for me to remember, but you know who you are. And I really appreciate you, and I mean that from my heart, and that's where we want to go. So, here it is. It's the alleged Black Friday here in the United States. Um, I don't think African American people invented this part, but they, they did support much of what led to the United States being a great country. But the, I think it's the black is about going into the black, getting out of debt. You know, that's a wonderful thing. It feels really good when we don't have debt. It's a very freeing feeling. Well, okay. So, will people run over each other? <laughs> <laughs> with their shopping carts this week. I mean, I, you know, I mean, the moon is in, um, goes from Sagittarius to Capricorn. I mean, in Vedic astrology, it's in the constellation of Sagittarius, early Sagittarius, in Vedic sidereal zodiac, in the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And um, the lunar mansion of that part of the sky is known as Mula, which means getting to the root of things. And this is something we seem to have a hard time to do, especially when it comes to politics and entertainment. People just don't want to really go there deep. Like, who owns the banks? Who's, who owns the big businesses? Who owns all these type of things? Like, getting to the root of stuff, you know? Um, you know, what is medical colonialism? Um, what is um, a experience where large corporations, artificial intelligence, and big pharma owns everything and is paying huge amounts of money to manipulate things politically. That's moolah stuff right there. That is, um, it's about the root, getting to the root of things. How you feel. It's like we want to go to the heart. So Mula Nakshatra is ruled by K2. K2 is the south node of the moon. K2 holds our subconscious. It holds our past life karma our good deeds and our misdeeds. It is symbolic of spirituality. It is sort of like the fish with no head, but it's also where our gut feeling and our instinct relies, and it lies, and we, sometimes we, when something feels, doesn't feel right, but it appears okay, you gotta trust that K2. You know, K2 is trying to tell you something. A really forceful K2 might get you in a bad situation, you know, because you have to pay your debt. You know, I've had that happen to me before and you know we've all um, been misinformed I mean the very people that said promised things about what they were doing it turned out their promises were false they didn't really know it they just thought well we're going to keep everybody safe so we better better safe than sorry oh shoot some of the people got hurt oh well uh, we don't no sorry no sorry we're just perfect we're just you know we're telling you what to do mm -hmm. you know and that's not good stuff folks that's never that's never going to rest easy um, and we'll never forget what happened, you know, that, you know, I think, um, if you ever, any of you have watched Neil Oliver, I think you can, you can get a glimpse of what I'm thinking about and talking about here. Um, Mula is ruled by Neritri. Now, Neritri, she's a goddess of calamity, too. So there's like, you know, Mula in Sanskrit means root. So it's like today we're just getting to the root of things, you know, and why is our obsession with greed? 
you know, why is the birth of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua Bar David, somehow associated with um, the Saturnal Fest of Rome? You know, and, um, you know, when he was probably born in late August or something, <laughs> or, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting, okay, it's just, that's all I'm going to say, it's just very interesting, but you know what, we, we do, we, before there was Christianity, you know, there was Judaism, before, and before Christianity, there was Buddhism. But before Buddhism, there was the Bharata people who, you know, later were mislabeled Hindi in reference to the Indus River and stuff. Um, you know, Krishna and Jesus have a lot of similarities in their teachings. And, um, and it's really about having faith and doing the right thing and not putting all your energy into the material world. Mula is the root. Let's get to the root of it. Uh, Mula people, if you tell them an untruth, they're going to be really upset with you because they look at things deeper than the surface. Um, you know, words like conspiracy theory, anti-vaxxer, you know, they become weaponized. They're not, you know, conspiracy theory is a weaponized word so you don't do your own investigation. It's like, I can just say this and that means it's not true. You know, it's basically, that's not always the case. Um, and I wish it was, but it's like, I think everyone needs to do their own research and don't just trust legacy media. That's what Mula would say. And Mula uses calamity to bring forth more riches and better things in your life. And so, this is just for one day, all right? It's a moon for one day. When we get to, um, you know, winter solstice time between December 16th through like the 29th, of December, that's when like Mula Nakshatra is going to be activated in the sun, and so just you know, be in that rooted place. And also, K2 gives you a lot of intuition, so trust your intuition today and realize that after calamity, like you know, you could lose a lot of stuff, have it all taken away, and then real wealth it clears the path for real wealth. That's what Naritri does, you know. She's like, I'm going to take some stuff away from you, you're not going to like this. But it's still a Jupiter ruled sign, so good fortune is coming. So, I mean, that was a lot. But I, uh, that was my expose on Mula Nakshatra. It's a moon in Sagittarius going into Capricorn today in Western astrology. Capricorn also addresses us to where our limits are emotionally, psychically, intellectually, and how to become more practical in our life. With that said, greetings Aries, and welcome to Black Friday, and <laughs> welcome your horoscope. Let's talk a little bit of Mars talk. You know, I didn't do that as much last week. Um, but, you know, Mars is retrograde, and Mars is in Gemini. In, you know, not constellation, but the tropical zodiac, which is what this part's about. And so, um, that's your third house. And what's your relationship like with your siblings? What's your relationship like with information? What's your relationship like with um, people that really carry deeper truths and are you, um, you know, Mars is actually a karaka for the third house, that means it activates the third house. So the third house is a place where you get courage, you know, and um, it's a new Pachaya house. Um, Sagittarius, Sagittarius rules your ninth house. Ninth house is the house of good fortune, it's like the most blessed house it is. It rules fathers, it rules foreign travel, it rules foreign languages and cultures, it rules ashrams and monasteries and places where we get spiritual knowledge and other religions and things that are exotic and unusual to us. Those are the things that you should be tasting and experiencing this week. Um, and what I see is like some career stuff, like you might have a small business, you know, and they, they have this thing of local business Saturdays, and I love that. You know, it's like supporting your local people really gives strength to your community, and that's, you know, I think Mula would approve, and certainly Purva Shada would approve, who rules Venus, who's there the, on, on Saturday. It's like, yes, support your local people, you know, and, and keep doing the good work, and don't be afraid, Aries. You're never afraid, I know. <laughs> keep going forward. Forward, forward. Um, 
Green's Taurus, welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, here's what I'll say. Like, if you're like an early Taurus born in April, like, this, this Friday night's going to be good. It's going to feel all right. You know what I mean? Your, your groove's going to be on with the, the Capricorn moon, and we're on this waxing new moon cycle. So things are just starting to kind of pick up, you know, we're just getting a little bit of upliftment here. Uh, Venus is in the eighth house. And so it's kind of passionate too. It kind of Venus and Mercury are both passionate. So you know you might be thinking about magic and the occult throw. You might be thinking about sex. You might be thinking about death. You know it's funny. I'm one of my um, Taurus friends was like, "So my wife is getting me to write a will. He's a few years older than me, and we got to just make sure everything goes." And it's just it's it's an unpleasant conversation really because this guy is really he's like 67, but he's really really vital. He's really living his life. You know. And he's a super good guy, generous guy, loves the community. Um, and, um, you know, it's like, we, you know, this is like when, when Krishna is giving counsel to Arjuna, he says to him, you know what, we're not this body, dude. This is just a temporary outfit. You are not your body. Get over your ego and your identification with this. You've had many incarnations before. You'll probably have many afterwards. And you're putting it, well, you know... If you die, it's not going to be that, you know, and even in Christianity, they say, for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. I mean, a lot of them in the modern Orthodox sense don't believe in reincarnation, but the old Christians, a lot of them did. So, you know, any, anyhow, I mean, it's a pretty common thought in many traditional spirit forms of spirituality. Don't get, up, don't get hung up on what happens here. You know, that's what I'm saying. And this weekend looks really good for Tara, so enjoy it. Um, greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, everything's about relationship right now. You know, who you know, what you know, it comes into play. And if you're looking for work, good jobs are coming to you. I think one of the things that would be good for Geminis to do is just a little bit of self-review. Not to play, you know, left side, right side of the brain, oh, that was my old self, this is my new self, just to kind of integrate it all together. It's like, that happened. I have to admit it, you know. Um, I have not been perfect, but I'm working now to be better. I learned my lesson, and I'm moving forward now to keep every single bit of integrity that I possibly can. I had a wonderful conversation with a gentleman this morning who pretty much caught his partner in acts of deception that she wouldn't come clean to and you know he loves this person dearly and this has happened a few times and it's like he kind of needs to clean himself off and get out of this relationship and you know and so I had it just like a counsel to have courage you know get in that you know and, and I'd say the same thing to you Jim and I if you are not in a good relationship Good ones are coming, you know, if you're not in a good career relationship, because seventh house is ten from the tenth. You could get into a better contract, you can get into a better relationship right now at work and career. Generally speaking, though, it's pretty positive. Things are up, you've got strength, you've got courage. And what I like about Mars retrograde in your first house is you're not blaming the other people right now. It's just like the problem is always within, and when we clean ourselves out within, all the good things come to us from the outside in. <clears throat> okay. Greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. So, got a moon in Capricorn, at least this afternoon, on the West Coast. Um, you know, that's opposite your moon. That's also a relationship house. So there's sort of like this romantic feeling to this weekend for, for Cancer. It's like, hmm, yeah, I want to get close to somebody. But here's the other deal is like we really have to watch our health right now. We really wa have to watch what we're doing. So how do we ensure our health? Well, six house is about exercise, it's about eating right, and it's also about doing charitable acts. One of the beautiful things about the holiday season, Christmas and Hanukkah and solstice, is that there's a lot of groups that come out that help the needy. And a lot of times we culturally in our heart, we find ourselves being more generous. I love that. You never can outgive God. You can never outgive the Divine Mother. You don't have to worry about anything you give not being seen. You know, because it's going to happen. And just give freely. Don't be hilarious. Don't be foolish about it. But, you know, be selective and discriminate 
but be grateful that you have something to share. That's the mark. And when you do that, you continue to affirm in your life more good things are happening to you. That's the that's the secret this week. It's it's about service and then just eating right. You know, trying not to give in too much. You know, it it's hard when somebody makes cookies that are just like the ones your mom made. Oh, <laughs> you know, we got to do that. But um, you know, you're an emotionally sensitive person, and there's a lot of hard work for you. The holiday season actually puts more work on almost all of us. So. Have some self-compassion, <sighs> breathe and go, you know what, everything's going to be all right. I'll get through this time. Mm. Well, greetings Leo and welcome to your horoscope. I mean, generally it's a good time to be a Leo. I mean, Sagittarius time is a great sign for you. It's in the fifth house. It's kind of a, like a Leo-like house. So you're feeling more of yourself. It's like, I feel empowered because I'm able to give, you know. I'm, I'm living, my heart's open, I'm expressing myself, I'm playing my music, I'm painting my pictures, I'm in my play that I wanted to be in, and that kind of thing. You know, that is, I'm um, writing a book, I'm, I'm making it all happen, I'm with my kids, I'm loving life, my kids and I are having a great relationship right now. Those are the things I want to hear. So if you're a Leo out there, you want to make a, make a comment about, yeah, that's going on with me, or no, that isn't actually. You know, we could talk about that. I, um, I do. Um, we could get we could get in touch, and we can find out. You know, um, what is the essence of of you, and you know, you you could uh, see what's working because you could be somebody who has Sun and Leo, and you could have you know you know seven plant. No, not that many, but you know, you could have um, you know three or four planets in Virgo. You know, say or or you know several planets in, in Cancer and, and you know the, all of those things are, are setting up your outlook on life um, but for the most part things are really positive they're flowing I mean I just like don't overexert yourself and I mean because of Naritri and the disasters you know I just think I thought God somebody's gonna run over somebody with a shopping cart on Black, on Black Friday I just know <laughs> Like it's always that big screen TV, you know, or or it's that cheap it's that cheap laptop. They never have enough. <laughs> we just got them in there now. Oh, but I got this other one. It's a little more, but you know. <laughs> always think need before greed. Need before greed. That should be your mantra. Well, greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, you know, like I said, it's kind of more of an introspective time where you feel more like being a homebody. That's what Sagittarius is, because it really is your fourth house, and that's a home. It's also a time where you can be sentimental, and we're feeling memories about our mother and what she would do and how she'd handle things. And like, you know, you got all those turkey leftovers, you're making the turkey soup, and you're, you know, cooking things, and you know, you let other people go out there and shop. You know, I'm going to just stay home and avoid maddening crowds. You know, no buy is the best buy if it gets rid of your peace of mind. You know what I'm saying? No thing is going to bring you happiness. Things are temporary, you know, but the love we share with each other and the relationships we make, those are the things that are really lasting. And what I think is like, if you're a Virgo who's like a songwriter or artist, this could be a very creative weekend at home. You could be doing some painting. You could be doing, you know, some songwriting, writing your book, or doing whatever, and it just feels so good, you know. So I think whatever you get done, you could be with your kids, spending time with your children, all of that. It's all going to put you in the plus column right now, and, you know, just respect your feelings, your inner happiness, and hang out with your tribe, with your good people. Okay, well, greetings, Libra, and welcome to your horoscope. Yeah, I mean, Venus in the third house, you know, I, I talked about sisters, siblings in general, cousins, maybe female cousins, female friends you had, you know, sometime between elementary school and, and college, you know, um, especially things I think that happened in your life between 14 and 21, that's where I look at the third house. I mean, other astrologers have different opinions about it, but I kind of, I, I sort of like I'm on the, on the track of like seven years for every house. You live 84 years. If you live more than that, it's just like a total gift, um, you know. 
And even if you live less, sometimes that's a total gift too, though it doesn't always seem like that at the time. We want to love our people, you know, and we want those opportunities. Um, I think now that Saturn is in Aquarius moving direct for you in the fifth house, it's like you're addressing creative blocks. You're improving your relationship with your children. It's taken a while and it might have been hard, but it's things are moving and things are getting better. Now, Venus, you know, like I said, it's going to help you with creative stuff. And um, the. The third house is really crafty. It's like, you know, my mom used to make this like, um, sort of like take tissue paper and make it look like a stained glass window in her house during the holidays. It was lovely. She had this like Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus picture she put in there. And it was just like such a, a sweet, beautiful tribute. And I really, I like that idea of a holy night whether your tradition is Hanukkah or Solstice or the Christian Christmas, it's like bringing that spiritual, giving, generous, loving aspect to it is, um, it's always good payback. Um, and it looks like you're doing traveling, like there's a lot of travel on the Libra agenda right now. So that's interesting. So, I mean, Making those travel plans, even if you don't go someplace, they say can really alleviate depression. And um, you're getting better for be you're getting ready for better things. Just you know, keep taking care of your health, keep being generous and giving, and it's all coming back to you. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that was weird. Um, greeting Scorpio and welcome to your horoscope. I didn't talk about the Mars aspect. So you know, Mars in Gemini. Gemini is eight signs away from Scorpio, so it's eight from the eighth. Um, I mean, you're naturally interested in the occult, into things like tarot, astrology, metaphysics. I mean, some of you are just interested in science and you're kind of super left brain. I get that. I know those kind of Scorpios too. But even those Scorpios, I've noticed, there's like this curiosity about possibilities. And they do seem to have a fascination with death, sex, other people's property, even birth. You know, what happens, you know, when does the soul come in? All these wonderful questions. And um, those real, those questions go internalized, you know. And, and so sometimes we can feel aggression towards people that have wronged us, you know, people that have stolen from us, people that have taken things from us. And to be able to let go and release that and just accept that, well, that was just what it is, you know, and let... Um, let God sort them out, so to speak, or as some would say, let karma deal with them, you know. It's a releasing, you know, and sometimes we have to go through this sort of inner life purging, um, you know, and maybe you're in a partnership where your partnership's having a lot of inner struggles right now, and so it's harder to give them the, the room they need to process that and move forward. Um, but for the most part, it's like you're able to make some money. You're able to make some gains. I said last week, you know, put a scarf around your neck, keep your throat warm. Um, you know, you've got dental work needs taken care of. Just take care of the dental work. Do it. You know, um, it doesn't get better by putting it off. I mean, unless you, you know, you're, you've got a really good regime and probiotics, and you don't eat any sugar, and you're building up your, your teeth again. Um, I've heard there's ways of doing that. And um, I just say, you know, you're taking care of family right now, too, your, your values, and living by your values is super important for you. All right. Greetings, Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, we had a new moon last week, um, or rather this week on Wednesday, so we're in this new start cycle. This morning, moon's still in Sagittarius, but by the afternoon, you know, it's going into Capricorn in that deep place. So you're going to be dealing with finances, money, what you want to do. And a lot of you want to get ready for the holidays just so you can enjoy parties later on and not think about what you need to get Aunt Susie or your your nephew Bryce. Um, it's a cool thing about Sagittarius and Sagittarius time is like it's a playful time, it's a party time, and you're you're the flavor of the month, so you might as well have a good time and roll with it, right? You got Venus in the first house, you got Mercury in the first house, people are listening to you, people are loving you, 
you're looking better than usual. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's just like this week's mostly just taking care of your personal needs and your personal life. There might be, you know, okay, so there is, you know, there might be trouble in paradise. There might be some relationship conflict you're having because of Mars in the seventh house retrograde. <sighs> you know, I think the best thing to do is come clean, never blame, and just say, well, ask people questions. How does this feel for you? Allow them to express their feelings. And don't blame yourself. Give yourself a lot of self-compassion, too. Instead of excuses, let's go to gratitude. Like, well, you know, these are things I liked about our relationship, and this is the part that I would continue to like to like. You know, things like that. that. Those are openings. The thank yous. More thank yous and less sorries. That's, uh, I hear that's the key. And um, Jupiter, well, Jupiter's direct, and uh, Jupiter is in your house of happiness, the fourth house, so like if you're in the real estate market, you want to buy a house or something, I think things are good, you know, just make sure there's no leaks, and the plumbing's good because of the Neptune being there, that, you know, those are issues, and so a good roof, good foundation, good plumbing, and you get a good house, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Greetings Capricorn, welcome to your horoscope. I mean, this weekend was made for Capricorns. If you're a Capricorn entrepreneur, I mean, I think, you know, things are going to go your way to some extent, and um, that's a good thing. And so I, want, I encourage that, you know, just always use a little bit of caution, um, exercise, you know. Taking care of your body, it's really, I mean, we've had a lot of rain recently, um, or where I live, um, you know, and just getting cooped up, I, I usually have to ride my bike to work, and, you know, so I have to do other things, do yoga at home, do do some push-ups, you know, um, there's different ways, push-ups, pull-ups, ways you can really get your heart rate up and still um, get yourself stronger, you know, because that's a really good thing to do. In the fall, we want to be fortifying our health in every way as we're having this countdown to winter solstice, and, um, that's important stuff, and and so with Mars in the sixth, that's going to help you. Um, Saturn in the second, you know, just taking care, being somewhat conservative with your money, and um, you know, being being good to yourself. You know, don't get your, you know, don't do something if you got a neck injury. Don't do something that's going to increase your neck injury. You know, if you've got <clears throat> a toothache, don't start eating hard candy, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just practical kind of stuff that you have to deal with this week. All right, um, and realize, too, that, you know, as the sun is transiting, boom, boom, the sun is transiting the um, 12th house, you know, there could be some losses. <clears throat> and like I said last week, you know, work on your spiritual life. Work on giving to others. Choose your losses, rather than having your losses choose you. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. So, yeah, that was that was good. Yeah, and you can just pick up, you know, if you lose something, you just pick up right where you left off and just work towards a better thing. Well, greetings, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, I see, like, Monday, Tuesday, those are going to be like the moon will be in an Aquarius. Those will be really positive days for you. I'm really hopeful, upful. I mean, this weekend, I'd say, eh, you might want to lay low. You know, go go find one of your Virgo friends and help them make the turkey soup. <laughs> uh, I think that would be a good idea. You know, um, you know, just high-minded people. You know, go into that ashram, just uplifting each other. It's like, at the end of the day, no matter who we are, there's ways we feel defeated. And anyone who can just encourage us to get right back on that right track, to walk in the light, that's going to help. And I like to think you're that kind of person. You know, you might be hosting a party this week. Um, yeah, you know, set a tone with each other so that people can get to know each other better. Set up way a tone so that no one feels left out or is a wallflower. Just playing games that make inclusiveness happen. Um, they're so 
meaningful. And there's a lot more games like that out these days. And that really helps build friendships. We build friendships with each other when we we're able to let down our guard and actually be more intimate with each other. And I think that's what that's what's happening for you. You're going to make some new friends. And, um, you know, and, and just kind of like watch your back and just sort of, you know, take care of that spiritual life too. Take care of the debts, you know, and give a little extra this week. Well, greetings, Pisces, and welcome to your horoscope. Um, you got a great vision. You got a great outtake on life right now. Um, this weekend, moon's in the 11th house. You'll probably be going to parties this weekend. You're probably going to have social environment. Friends are going to stop by. You, you don't, I'll tell you, you don't need to necessarily um, throw a party. Sometimes the party will come to you. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's like with Jupiter and Neptune in the first house, that looks like a party to me, you know, as far as that that transit going on for you. And and Jupiter is in your 10th house. It's like you could throw a party real easily. Um, I mean, not Jupiter so much, but I mean, Sun, Venus, and Mercury, and Jupiter ruled Sagittarius are in your 10th house. Um, Jupiter's in your first house. So there's this like expansion right now for you. It's like, mmm, everything could be better and everything is better and getting better. And because you've got this positivity, don't forget who loves you. Don't forget to help out those other people around you and and lift it up. You know, some people are in confusion, you know, and a lot of times, you know, I mean, we want to have good times, but alcohol, even too much caffeine, even, you know, too much, you know, vaping, too much urban, definitely drugging, you know, all those things. Just kind of keep yourself in check, you know, even too much sugar. We can get ourselves off kilter and it's like we want to want to enjoy ourselves, but what we really want to do is bring out the best person we're made to be, that raw, integral self without anything. That even without anything, I'm at peace, I'm good. That's what we want to generate. And um when you're able to generate that from within, you know, when you're going out doing your karma yoga this week and helping other people at work, helping others, if you're, out, if you're doing a retail and, you know, you're dealing with those annoying customers, I get it, you know, but you can send them some love, let, let them know that, you know, you're important to me and I want something good to happen to you. And that, yeah, that's going to make your, your week better, it's going to make their week better, it's going to make everyone's uh, week better. and. Uh, you know, by the end of the week, the moon will be in Pisces, and you know you'll be you'll be like grooving even more than you're grooving right now. Wow, you know? <laughs> is that even possible? It is. <laughs> hey, thank you for giving me this time with you this week, and I really appreciate you. And I appreciate those comments. I really got a kick out of it last week, and I just know that. Um, we're going forward together because of you, and I'm just super grateful for all of you at the bottom of my heart. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help you in your world that's within my capabilities, let me know. I appreciate your comments. I thank you for sharing this video with others, for subscribing to me. It really means a lot. I'd like to hit a thousand subscriptions. Would it be possible by the end of the year? I think it is. And uh, certainly with your help. And so uh, ring the bell notification. Um, Keep it, keep it coming, my friends. Thank you so much. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Tat Sat.